All right, hello and welcome once again to another little Halet RV video. Today we're going to be walking around and seeing the basic functions and operations of a 22 RBS Cougar. Now understand we're not doing these just by request or just because we think it's fun. Um, every new RV that we sell here at Halet RV, uh, of which is plenty, uh, this is our uh, kind of our final prep and wash area over here. Um, it includes uh, like an instructional period so that you can get familiar with your new camper, especially first time folks. And we custom tailor that normally to the needs of the individual person. However, during these times, we're trying to do what we can to make sure we can service our customers. So we're going to provide our client with, uh, you know, basic functions, operations of this Cougar right here. And uh, if uh, you're the owner of this, if you have any other questions, definitely let us know because this is going to be very surface level. If you have more specific things once you get a hold of her, give us a call or a phone call away. If you are a general viewer, um, enjoy. And if you have specific questions, then know that when you purchase your RV from Halo RV, we will do the exact same for you. So, might bounce back and forth between myself and Mr. Dwayne a little bit here. Dwayne's done several of these with us. And we always like to start on the way in the RV because obviously nothing inside the RV matters if you haven't gotten in. So what do you like to tell us over here, Mr. Dwayne? All right, guys, we're going to start here with the steps. The steps fold in and out of the opening. The most important thing is the doors open as far as that can be so the steps can come in and out. The steps are adjustable. And when we bring them down, we just want to make sure we have a tight fit here so that when the door comes closed, it doesn't come into contact with the steps. Yeah, an important thing Dwayne said there, whether you're putting the steps up or down, have this door all the way open so that the little brackets that hold the steps in place don't bash into that thing as it's, uh, you know, coming in or out. All right, guys, I'm going to draw your attention to some safety features, and one of them is a fire extinguisher mounted right here by the door. Here at Halitz, we feel they're by the door for a reason. If you have a fire in here, don't try to fight it. Get you and your pets out. Real quick, another thing you want to do with that is every now and then, like maybe before you leave or something like that, you want to grab it and just shake the crap out of it because this type of fire extinguisher actually has a powder inside that will clump up. And if you don't keep it shaken up and keep that loose, then it's not going to do the job if you ever need it. But just like Dwayne said, you're not a firefighter. It's by the door. Just get yourself out of the door. Get, get anything that is alive kids, pets, your wife, husband, whatever, and get out of this thing and just let a professional do their job. And then we're going to come to our LP carbon monoxide detector. If you ever hear this go off, don't ask why. Open the door, leave the door open, and go to the front of the unit and shut the LP tanks off. We'll show you how to do that. Also, what can set this off is carbon monoxide, and that would probably be your furnace. We will show you outside, you turn your furnace on, a few minutes later this goes off. Bugs have a tendency to want to build nests around the furnace outlet, and that would cause a carbon monoxide back into the unit. Again, don't ask why I go out, shut the LP off, and check the outlet to your furnace. We'll show you that. Now, if you've turned all your propane and everything off and that thing continues to chirp, remember that those things have a lifespan. There's a little air filter in there that checks the air quality. That's how it works. So, periodically, you might need to change that thing. Now, we can't tell you how often. It could be two years. It could be ten. It depends on the air quality where you tend to camp. Yes. What else you got for us here, Mr. Dwayne? I'm going to reposition just a little bit. Right here, we have the power control center in this unit. At a house, we call it our fuse box. Right. And on this side is, just like your house, they're breakers. And it controls the 110. They're all listed out. This side is our spade fuses. And that's the 12 volt side. They're all listed out as what functions they do also. And if you ever blow a spade fuse, there'll be a little red LED come on and tell you which one is bad. We would recommend that you disconnect from power to change that fuse. That way you don't accidentally arc something else. Kind of like when you accidentally, you know, drop the screwdriver across the battery terminals of Dad's Studebaker. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> as we move around, we have... These are thermal sensors, guys. These interact with your thermostat for heating and cooling. We do not want to decorate over those. They'll sense our temperature for us. 
As we come on down the wall, we just have a general light switch right here. I'm going to flick it quick. It's going to go dark over Josh back on. And those two things he just talked about, they connect to the in-command system. We will talk more about that just before we step outside so we can yeah. see the in and the out of it at the same time. Tell us about the fridge, buddy. We have a Dometic reefer here. We're going to go ahead and open it. Right up here on the headboard is on and off. Very simple. Auto and gas. Very simple. Um, you're going to want to run this on auto most of the time. What auto does when you set it to auto, it looks for the power source of 110, park power, like when you're plugged in. If for whatever reason it drops that power, it's going to automatically search and automatically lay on LP. If the 110 power comes back on, it will automatically switch. It'll do that all day long if it needs to. So how do I know it lit on LP, on, on propane? There's a little indicator light up here that says check. If that is lit, then you need to go back through. Just turn it off and back on and see if it lights. If it didn't light, please check your LP tanks. Make sure you turn them on and that you have LP. Yeah, the number one reason that, that propane things like a furnace, a stove, whatever, aren't lighting is because people tend to forget to turn their bottles on in transit. <laughs> yes. Um, we're going to draw our attention to the cooktop. The cooktop, glass top, is not a cook surface. Please don't light the burners, try to cook on it. It simply folds back out of your way. We have an igniter here, just like your grill. It has arrows on it. You rotate it. That creates spark to light it. And that sparks all of the burners. And this being a Furion oven, it does spark the oven as well. That's one of the nicer things on these Cougars here at Halo RV. How the oven works, we have a flame symbol on the knob, and we have an indicator for each burner. We would simply line up the flame and rotate, and there we go. You can do that to one, two, or three, or as Josh said, you can open the oven and ignite the oven by turning this to the flame symbol, holding in, and ignite. Yep, yep, pilot's lit now. Once the pilot is lit, you hold the button up here for approximately 10 seconds, then you can let out. Flame will continue to go from there. You simply rotate it to whatever temperature you desire to bake at. At that point, you can turn it back up. Now, a cool note on this, guys, so that you know that you're not going to turn this thing into a bomb. You turn this thing to the pilot light symbol. You push it in. It's not pumping gas into the RV yet. You have to start sparking before uh, it will start to actually provide gas. That's a safety mechanism put on the Furions. That's something that most ovens don't do. That's a specific thing I like to point out here. Now, another quick note while we're looking at the stove. We talked about, well, if, if the refrigerator or if the water heater, the furnace, if they won't light on propane, um, you might need to turn your bottles on. But if you haven't used the RV in, the, uh, in a while, after you turn your bottles on, you might need to light the front burner. You can light any of them, but specifically I say the front burner because it's a higher output burner. Like these are 4,500 BTU. This is 9,000 BTU. So if you light that sucker and burn it really hard until the flame just burns true and doesn't spit and sputter at all, basically what you're doing is you're bleeding the air bubbles out of the lines because it could just be an air bubble that's stopping that from working on gas mode, and that's why the check light is coming on. As we're right here, this button indicates we have a light. It lights up the burners for you, and it also lights up the inside of the oven. You know, just like you light up my life, Dwayne. There you go. <laughs> we're going to focus our attention here for a moment. This is your air conditioning ceiling pack. On this, the two things you need to know. Right here, you pull these two levers. There's a simple filter inside. You would take it out, rinse it out in your sink with warm, soapy water. How often you have to clean that, I don't know. Depends on air quality. When it looks dirty, grungy, please clean it. Right here are two little levers, and as I push those, it's going to open a main duct right here that's going to center dump into this unit. That is a great feature for it's extremely warm in this unit. You want to come in and cool it down. This will center dump the air into the unit and cool it down. It will not push air through to your ceiling registers at that point until you close it. We do not want to center dump very long. It will actually create frost and freeze up the air conditioner and shut it down. As we move across, we have a radio right here. We have an on and off button. In your green owner's uh, pack, there is also a remote for this. 
most frequently asked question on this guys are the zone buttons right here the zone buttons refer to inside and outside um, which zone is which um, they wire them in different ways so that would just be an experiment for you touch zone one and see where you have that sound yeah just put it on like volume number 10 push one push two and then you know you'll figure out where they're at now what's important about remembering that guys if it's 10 30 at night and you're watching arnold schwarzenegger get to the chopper um you might want to make sure your outside speakers are off uh outside speakers and outside lights are the two most frequent uh complaints to the uh you know the park police yeah. if you will um we're gonna rotate over here to the television normally i'd pull the tv out show you how uh to change from park cable to antenna but on this model you don't have to worry about it it has a key TV system that automatically switches for you. So when you change the TV from uh, cable to, and uh, you know, rabbit ears, basically, right. the system goes, oh, the TV's looking for something else. I'll route a different signal to you. Now, while Mr. Dwayne is getting himself readjusted, um, one thing that I want to point out here, because I, I just don't think Dwayne's comfortable <coughs> getting in bed with me, um, <laughs> is up here, both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs. And I want to point out a quick little difference. Household plugs in an RV, they require park power or like uh, a generator. You know, you have to have the RV plugged in. These things are actually live right now. They're operating off 12-volt battery power. So that's a, a, a cool thing where if you are going to be off-grid a little bit, you can always keep like your phones topped off. But if you're a CPAP user, you're going to be off-grid. You want to have those plugs live. You are going to need to always make sure... Um, you know, you uh, have you know, like solar, an inverter, or a generator, something to be able to power those outlets. Now, another neat thing here, I, I mentioned before how the light switch by the refrigerator uh, is connected to the in-command system. That is actually a switch for the entire ceiling cabin lights that also connect to in-command. And as we talk more about that, you'll see that anything you can do off that system, you can do off your phone. But it's cool that you don't have to. Like if you lay down and you want to turn this, uh, all the lights off, you can do it right here in bed. All right, we're going to draw your attention to a safety egress window. These windows have a red exit on them. Right here is a little red handle. If you were to grab this and pull, the screen will pop right out. To get out this window, push the red handle towards the window, bring it out, push it straight out the window. At that point, the easiest way out, God forbid you have to get out, is head first. This window right here where my finger is does have a ventilation notch. Just like that, that's a great feature that you can have ventilation and not get rained in on. To close it, you're going to bring it back in until you see the rivet, rotate it, put it back in its handle. That's riveting. At this point, we're going to come to, and it says dimmer right on it, but in order to make it work, you hold it, and the lights, see them dim. Once you let go, it has a memory feature. It'll be there. You can tap it to turn the lights off, tap it, turn the lights on, hold it again. It'll run through and brighten up the lights. As we come to your recliners, we have a button on each one for heat and massage. And I'm going to push the cushion down just a little. These have a rip cord feature right here that you would pull. That's your recline feature. Brings up your foot rest. It's got a couple cup holders here and a little bit of hidden storage right here, which is great for remotes and that kind of thing. From here, it's going to be a little bit tight quarters, so I'm going to take over steering the ship for just a second. Um, as we come into the bathroom here, couple things I want to point out. Uh, RV toilet operation is different from home toilet operation. Cougars have these nice porcelain stools, but whether it's porcelain or a plastic bowl, they all pretty much operate the same way. Um, so a couple things here. You can see if I uh, look down in here a little bit, you might see some of that water uh, sitting there. Um, you always want a little bit of water in the bowl when you're not using it because the water is actually kind of acting as a, a, a blocker to prevent the backflow of odors. Now when you're ready to use this, you've got your little foot flush here, and it's kind of two-stage. If you depress it partially, you see that it's going to start filling with water. Once you get enough water in there, you can do your business. Do your business. Now once you're all done, you're going to just put your foot down and hold it all the way. And you want to give about a, a 5 to 10 count, and then let go. And you'll see that a little bit of that water gets caught right there. And the reason that you want to always make sure that you water load the bowl before you flush and you continue to hold your foot down after the flush is because, again, the plumbing system on this works differently than your house. You have to make sure that enough liquid is going down with any sort of solid mass to prevent a large uh, solid mass buildup in the black tank, which is, 
sometimes even a black tank flush it will struggle if you if you've really kind of water starved everything that's in the tank and i know that the more water you put down if you're dry camping the more water that you're using out of your tank and i get that that's a precious resource but uh it's really not fun taking care of a pyramid inside of a tank. It's just not the way you want to spend your Friday afternoon, you know what I mean? Um, now, as we uh, spin around here for a little bit, neat little thing in this bathroom is that your uh, switches are backlit. So you can see them at night, which is very handy for somebody like me who wakes up and then stumbles through things. Um, something I want to point out over here is the uh, GFI, Ground Fault Interrupt. Um, what that means, if you're not familiar with it, you've probably seen... Like in a in a bathroom at your house, you got these switches that say like test and reset. Um, God forbid, because we have electrical and we have water next to one another. That's obviously not a uh, a good combination to be playing ball. But in our society, we like to have these things next to one another in a bathroom because we can run things like shavers, blow dryers, uh, etc. Well, God forbid one of those electric devices when it's plugged in fell into a sink with water. That outlet will trip. Now, there are some times that for various power demand reasons, um, you might, let me back up a little bit here, like you might plug into, say, that set of outlets, well, and it just ain't working. Well, it's possible that that GFI circuit got reset, and there are two of them in almost any RV, and this is no exception. Usually, it's half and half the trailer. So, one of them is over there, but the other one is a little easier to miss because Cougars have these big, big cabinets in the kitchen. If you take a knee, you can see the other one there. That's probably going to run most of the stuff on this side of the trailer. The other one runs everything on that side of the trailer. As long as we're looking at it, we keep talking about it. Let's start taking a look at our in-command system. I like this. I like in-command a lot. I think it's really slick. Um, by default, usually these are, we just program these to four zeros, but uh, it's very easy. Just go through the settings to pre-program that or reprogram that. Now, if you look up here, it's given us a lot of information. It's a digital command center versus a physical switch command center. We can actively monitor how much is in our tanks, and frankly, you can monitor it far more specifically than you could with a, a physical monitor panel. HVAC, that's heating and cooling, things like that. You can turn your heating, cooling on, off. You can just operate fans. You can operate your furnace, like right up here at the top. You see that it says like rear AC. Well, you can control different things with that right there. Um, anytime you're ready, you just hit the home button and go back. We can operate all kinds of various lights. Now, what's cool is all these different things that we're looking at on here, whether it's our slides, our awnings, um, our water pump, our water heater, all that stuff, you can operate that also from your phone with the free in-command app, which is really, really handy. However, this is kind of the face um, of the in-command system, the heart and the soul and the brain of it is located in the front pass-through. And that's what this guy is right here. Now, when you first look at it, it's super intimidating, but the funny thing is, you shouldn't have to feel that way. There's The good news is that Keystone's done the work for you here, so, I mean, you really don't have to. Now, instead of those common 12-volt blade fuses, what you're looking at here is like an automotive, like bus style, uh, like fuse, breaker, relay. Some everyone seems to call it a little bit different thing. Now, what's kind of nice is you can get those replaced at like any automotive uh, parts store. And just to give you an idea of how much easier that is to get a hold of, um, like in in Branch County, Michigan, there are two licensed RV repair facilities. But in Branch County, Michigan, where we're at, there are 42 auto repair and supply facilities. So those are very easy to get when you're on the road because sometimes when you get out of the Midwest or, or high concentration areas, sometimes you can't find an RV dealer in every neck of the woods, but everybody needs car parts, you know? Another thing here is what you're looking at is this is a central wiring system, the central nervous system of the RV. And Keystone was the first towable manufacturer to color code all of their wiring. And all that's well and good. But frankly, you probably don't need to know that for daily operation. The one thing I want to point out here is like just in a, a uh, holy crap, something went wrong scenario, is this right here, this on-off switch and this motor. So if for some reason you can't get your phone to connect to in-command, if for some reason that touch screen isn't working or got damaged or whatever, you can always walk out here, select like motor one, motor two, which could be power stabilizer jacks, awning slides. You can select these things and then hit open or close. And you always have basically like a, a backup 
way to be able to operate those systems so that you never, never get yourself kind of, you know, caught in the weeds and feeling stranded. All right, guys, here on the outside location of, of the unit, we have power. This would be connected to a GFI, it's 110. Here you have output for a TV, so you can set a TV right here and watch it. As we move along, you have your water heater. What we're looking at here is, right here is our reset. If you ever have any trouble with the water heater, you would push on these two guys, you'd feel a click to reset any kind, system. Kind of like that GFI reset switch, you'd feel that exactly. click? Exactly. Gotcha. And this is a DSI water heater, meaning it's auto ignition, direct spark ignition. That's actually a sparker, so you don't have to manually light anything out here. On the in command, either if you have it on your phone or inside, you'll select gas or electric. As Josh just, just said, you don't have to come out here and light it on gas. But for electric, you have to come out here and turn this little hidden switch to on. That's a little thing uh, there. It's kind of like a, a, a little safety override, I guess, so that you don't accidentally bump the thing. What do we got on the rear wall as we work our way around here? Oh, no, no, no. I forgot. We got to make sure there's water. How do we make sure there's water in the water heater? Because... You know, we don't want to be burning out your heater element. How we make sure there's water in the water heater before we ever turn it on is number one, the plug is in place. Right here's your plug and your drain. So make sure it's in. Right here's your temperature and pressure valve. We're just going to pull on that ever so slightly and see the water come out. That would mean the water heater is 100% full of water and you can turn it on gas or electric. Fantastic. Now, what's on the back of the camper? Move to the rear of the unit. We talked about the key system. This is the input where you would hook up park cables, satellite, that kind of thing. It's all listed out inside. And the great thing is it does lock. Hey guys, also at the rear of the unit, we have our running lights, our tail and turn signals. The little Darth Vader helmet <laughs> is a Furion backup camera mount. On Cougars, they also have a left and right camera mount that are at the front of the unit at the lights. Here at Hamlet's, we can sell you and install the camera and show you how to use it. All right, guys, here is the side mount for the Furion camera if you choose to have it installed. If you don't, the unit will operate just fine. As we rotate to the front, we have our LP tanks. The valve on top is where you'd shut it off, lefty loosey, righty tighty. How we select which tank we're drawing from is on the regulator, which is right here. Whichever one this black knob is pointing to, that's the tank it's drawing off. In the rear, right here, there's a little sight glass. If it's green, you have LP pressure. If it's red, you do not. At that point, if it's red, just rotate that to the other tank. Then you can remove the empty tank, take it, and get it filled with no interruption in service. Here's our front power tongue jack. It has a switch for a light. It has up and down. Right here on top is a little, almost egg-shaped little rubber plug. But that is a manual override. For if the unit doesn't have power, you can pull this plug out. There's a little hex head in there. You just put your crank that's in the unit on it and you can manually run it up and down. Also, as we're here, this is the cover for your LP tanks. We just have it off so that you can see things a lot easier. We have a safety breakaway switch right here that activates the brakes in case this unit ever comes detached from the tow vehicle. This sets the electric brakes on the unit so it doesn't just roll away uncontrolled. What do you want to hook that to? Where you want to hook this is when you look at your hitch, you have the, the pin that goes through. You want this hooked in front of that. On the actual receiver. Yes. You want it hooked independently so that if it does come unhooked, it's got something to grab to. As we come around, we just have our standard battery right here in your battery box. 12 volt battery, positive and negative uh, hookups are standard. Now you folks might see some extra wires here. One of the cool things on these Cougars is that they have a uh, solar and inverter prep package standard on them. So if you choose to, you can add solar panels to the roof of this. You could add an inverter. And those are different things that we could do for you at Halid RV. Um, but if you add those things, that's where those extra wires come into play. So as it's currently setting, you don't necessarily need all of them. But frankly, guys, if you're not sure, just match the colors up. Hook all the red ones up to the uh, positive guy. Hook all the black ones up to the negative guy and go from there. You're not going to hurt it by having the extra things wired up. Once again, a little bit tight quarters. We're on the opposite side of the pass-through from where you saw the in-command, just for reference, by the way. So when you open the driver's side of the pass-through, you're looking at a couple of switches here. 
The ones on the left are the 12 volt tank heaters. So if you are, uh, you know, going to be camping where it is pretty darn cold, you can activate those things. And again, they're 12 volt powered. So if you're going to be traveling through where it's cold, plus remember you got cold winds whipping under the trailer, that's where those things can be handy. Uh, you've also got your switches right here enclosed in a lockable compartment for your power corner stabilizer jacks. That's a really nice thing. A lot of brands will put a switch like right here where the, um, you know, unmonitored neighbor kid Johnny can come over and mess with your stuff. Well, the last thing you want um, is to just sit there and continue to push and hold those uh, switches because you, you could burn out your uh, jack motor that way. It's important to remember these are not automatic leveling jacks. These are power stabilizers. All you're going to do is push the button until they come down and go and you hear them make good solid contact with the ground and then you let go. That's all you do here. And your battery disconnect right there, that is to, uh, as the name kind of implies, disconnects the battery, so that when the RV is parked or in storage mode, basically, you don't want it uh, to leave the battery connected because all kinds of different things, whether it's the stereo, uh, the circuit panels in the furnace or the refrigerator, they all have a very small 12 volt load on your battery and that's called parasitic load and that will actually totally deplete your battery um, surprisingly quickly. So when you're not using it, disconnect the, uh, the battery at the switch right there. And if you're gonna be storing it uh, over cold season, what do you do, Mr. Duane? Guys, if you're gonna be storing this over cold season, please remember to go to the front of the unit, open the battery box, disconnect it, take the battery with you, store it somewhere where it's warm and dry. Yeah, a little battery tender from the lawnmower store. Make sure you get a 12 volt one, obviously. Uh, those things are only 20 to 40 bucks and you'll what you won't spend replacing batteries that thing will immediately pay for itself after just a couple seasons what do we got over here we have our water control center here guys and what we have is right here is a blue lever and the instructions for that are right here on the lid to fill the onboard tank on the unit you would roll it up into that position you would hook your garden hose up here to a pressurized source and that would power fill the tank. Now, basically what this means, are you boondocking or are you park camping? That's another way to look at those yeah. two uh, things right there if you don't know what that means. And if you're park camping, you want it in the city mode, that's going to direct water directly into the unit off whatever pressure you have on your hose. Like the spigot from the park. Yes. This one here, do not confuse it. This has a sticker on it that says, this is your black tank flush. And if you're not sure, you can pick, put a nice little picture up here. And that's not a flower, that's this guy. And what this does is after you've emptied your black tank and you're absolutely sure the dump valve is still open, you can hook up here with a garden hose of pressure and that will power flush and clean the inside of your black tank for you. That reminds me, we're gonna circle back and we're gonna take a look at your sewer stuff because uh, we got to that rear corner and I think we overlooked it. Yeah. Um, now, important note don't use your city water hose for your black tank flush. And my recommendation is bring water hoses of two different colors. White hoses are for drinking water, green hoses are for utility purposes. It's, it's not likely, but I just don't like the idea of any level of back contamination of a fresh water line. It's just, it's just something I don't like to do. Um, what's this guy? This guy here is our outside water source. Yeah, on this unit, it can also be an outside shower. We have a flex hose. It hooks up here similar to an air hose. We're going to push it in. It's going to go click and it's connected. At that point, you can choose hot or cold water. To disconnect it, a lot of people have difficulty with this. Simply push in on the blue hose and it's disconnected. Beautiful. What's that little plug next to us there? The little plug is, a, is this is solar prep on the unit. For a standalone or suitcase style unit, you would set out here, plug into your unit, and that will maintain your battery. So this is portable solar prep, and on the roof is uh, fixed solar prep. Let's go take a look at the sewer stuff. All right, guys, as we're back here, we discussed inside about your carbon monoxide detector, on bugs building a nest on your furnace outlet. That's right here. Um, the easiest solution to that is, is just come see us, buy an inexpensive bug screen, and then we'll install it. Right here is your sewer hookup. We have a gray tank and a black tank listing right here. As you come down, gray tank, black tank, at this point they're closed. Before you take this cap off, you want to go out here to the dump station, make sure your sewer hose is in that dump station, and bring it up here and have it with you. That way when you take this cap off, 
if that happens, you can put your hose right on. There, therefore, you don't have to pay to have it clean up. When you've got your hose hooked up, pull your black tank first. It'll go rumble, rumble, rumble. Remember what's in that black tank. At that point, we would go ahead and open our gray tank. And gray tank is basically anything that goes down a shower or a sink. So basically, it's soapy water. That will rinse out the contaminants out of your hose so it's easier and cleaner for you to handle. At that point would be when you would want to hook up your tank flush, making sure the black tank valve is open. Yeah, always make sure that black tank valve is open first because otherwise you could be filling the black tank and if you're not paying attention, the toilet could be backflowing inside something fierce uh, while your partner in crime inside is going, oh my God! <laughs> when you're all said and done, you want to put the cap on it. That way in case there's anything ever happened, um, a valve gets pulled or whatever, it's, it, you don't have a mess. So once again, if this is your new RV and you have some specific questions, feel free to give us a call. We love taking care of our customers here at Haylet RV. Um, if you are not the owner of this new RV and you have some specific questions, remember that we will provide the same level of service for you on each and every new RV purchase here at Haylet RV. So give us a call. We do it all. Well, close. The only thing we don't do is hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.